What's up, divas and divas? So you already know who it is. You already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. Let me tell y'all something. First of all, I've had a very trying hour just doing a video that I had to keep doing over and over again. But you know what? You just got to be yourself. So I had to do that. I did not know that it was going to take so long. As well as that, as I did a fun video with my girl Mumsy, my daughter Mumsy, we did our Dollar Tree video. So make sure you guys check that out whenever I post it up. But there are other videos on the channel, so also make sure you guys check that out. Still rocking this Best Lace Wigs, which I absolutely love. This is my 360 Lace Frontal, and I am in love with it. I also did rock that blue hair, which is also cute. I did wear that for like three and a half days, and then it was time for it to come off because you guys already know how to do that so with that being said it's actually Monday tomorrow's Tuesday I really didn't want to do this real talk on Tuesday because well Tuesday the 19th of June I will be turning 44 years old so I figured I would take that day off and go to Bath and Body Works since I have some gift cards Mumsy says I spend too much or I have too many candles and lotion so we're just gonna not you can never have too many candles maybe too much lotion but you definitely can never have too much candles and that's what I'm planning on getting maybe a couple of lotion bottles in there but you know nothing important other than that there's really nothing huge and anything life-changing except for that I'm lacking sleep because I'm up all night editing videos and trying to make a wig and finally I've gotten around to the wig but other than that, we're going to get into this real talk because it's super duper late. It's 8.26 p.m. I'm not going to edit this until Tuesday, but I do want to get this over with because I'm very hungry. I only ate breakfast, and that's not cool. And I also have to clean up my room and go play with my grandson and go edit another video and another video. So, yeah. So, we're going to get into this real talk really, really quick. You guys already know the spiel. If you have a real talk that you want to talk about and you need to change the names that, you can always go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, so that way I can find you. And if you don't want your new, your real, I said your new, your real actual government names issued in the video, you can always send me a fake name that basically says I uh, change the names okay so let's get into that real talk okay all righty Hey April, let me start off by saying I love your videos so much and you have a beautiful family. Thank you. Let me just give you a little bit of background about myself. My name is Ty and I'm 20 years old and I'm currently in my second year of college but chose to, com to commute but chose to commute to school rather than live on campus. And I work as a bank teller. Oh yeah, and I am the only child. So I've been having this problem with my mom about me going places. I inform her about it days before I go and she's fine with it but when it comes to the day of what we get into a huge argument we could be having a nice conversation laughing and everything but as soon as I tell her I'm going somewhere she gives me a dry conversation and sometimes even the silent treatment I try to talk to her about how I'm feeling and all she does is talk over me and tell me to go in my room because she doesn't feel like hearing that I'm scared to talk to my mom and I shouldn't feel like that. I shouldn't be 20 with the same midnight curfew that I had when I was 18. I will be 21 years old in December and I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I haven't given her one reason not to trust me. I'm even still a virgin. The problem really isn't the curfew at all. It's the fact that every time I'm leaving the house, she gets mad and we argue. I just need advice on what I should do. It seems like nothing is working. Talking isn't working. Getting my grandma to talk to her isn't working. Just nothing. Thanks, April. Sorry for the long email. I know you like pictures, so I inserted one of myself. Keep up the good work. And girl, you are rocking this mustard yellow. Like, seriously, handbag, shirt, and all. Shoes, and the hair is flawless. Like, hello? She looked really, really cute, and I'm really, really feeling this yellow. Like, this is really, really pretty. Okay. I told you guys last week, I love yellow. Yellow is like a beautiful color for any skin complexion. And she looks so pretty in this. She has paired it well with these shoes and pants and her hair is flawless. Like seriously, 
beautiful brown skin diva seriously so my dear so Ty has the issue she's living at home she's 20 years old she's a bank teller she commutes back and forth to school and it's just her she's the only child and she has the issue with her mom seems like it's just her and her mom that live together because she didn't say anything about her dad because she tries to get her grandmother involved in it like basically you know can you talk to mom every time I want to go somewhere she's catching an attitude like I let her know days in advance hey I'm going here or I'm going there and she's cool with it but then when the time comes up like hey I'm leaving now her mom catches an attitude, she gets a little salty, she got a dry conversation with her, or she ain't got nothing to say. Either it's a silent, com silent treatment or a dry conversation. And basically, when Ty is trying to, you know, have a talk with her mom and let her know how she's feeling, the mother is basically just throwing her off, telling her to go to the room, talks over her. Well, sweetheart, you know something? It seems like your mom seems to be a little lonely. And I don't mean that in a bad way, you know what I'm saying? Like... I, me personally, I don't get like that because I never get a dull moment here at home. I never have a moment to be alone. If one of my kids goes somewhere, it's like, okay, bye, see you later. Um, be careful, be safe. Yeah, I do worry about them. That is the thing. But you have to keep in mind that you are an only child. And with that being said, when you're an only child, you're the only only child so your mom is going to be super overprotective over you and if it's just you and her living in the household she probably gets lonely when you're not there because she doesn't have anybody to talk with or share her ideas with or just her moments with in general so I can kind of get that because like you know if my daughter Tati wasn't here I mean I have my other two daughters but if I was just like with one kid I would probably be lonely and I wouldn't for say, say I wouldn't just I wouldn't be rude and mean about it but I would be lonely and I definitely would be overprotective and you know as a mother I can totally understand that with her you know you have your children and if you have your only child then you're definitely going to be like mama bear you're gonna definitely try to protect them for as long as you can and you know sometimes we do say the wrong things and sometimes we do go about things the wrong way and like I'll be the first to admit I have said some pretty harsh and mean things to my kids like I have five kids so I have said some pretty mean and harsh things to each and every one of them I'm not going to exclude any of them because I'm pretty sure that I have said some pretty mean things um, and that's just me being a parent and just being a little bit overprotective and just letting them know that how much I care about them but yet and still it's not right you know what I'm saying it's not right because each person has feelings we're all human beings and everybody deserves respect now being that you're 20 years old you're probably not ready to move out on your own and I'm pretty sure if you did your mother was probably going to give you a tantrum about but sometimes we have to let our parents know like you know I'm an adult now and even so like I said in last week's episode that you know sometimes it's best to just write a letter to a person because if you know them as a person and you know in fact that how they're going to react to something that you're saying to them or that you're at least trying to tell them and you know that they're going to react in a way or in a manner that you're not going to be able to deal with or it's in a manner that's not going to resolve anything then I feel like sometimes the best thing to do is to sit down when you have some free time and not when you're angry or emotionally hurt but just to sit down when you have some free time and have a conversation with them through a letter okay I say this because <clears throat> no one can sit there and argue with a piece of paper. Like, you're not going to write me a letter, and I'm not going to sit there and argue with this loose leaf piece of paper. I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to reread it. No matter how angry I get, I guarantee you, I'm going to read this letter more than once. And even though the first reading that I have, I might be a little upset, and I might come across as a little bit angry. I'm going to go back to the letter and I'm going to reread it. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes a lot of people are just best left with a letter of a communication. And I know that may suck at times, you know what I'm saying? Because it's always good to have communication, but sometimes you have to inch your way into the shit. You gotta inch your way in because if you just come back, come back, combat with them, you're never gonna resolve anything. And if you know that they're just like this defensive person that just wants to basically get their point across and that's all they wanna hear, then it's kinda of like you ain't got no wins in this girl. Just go to your room, you are not gonna win. This your mama, it is what it is, just take it as it is. Those type of people, you gotta just basically deal with them with a grain of salt and just 
leave them with a letter. Sometimes letters are just best than a conversation, especially with a person of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we as people can't even get our words out correctly. You know, like, hey, girl, what's up? But you get stuck and you don't really want to say, hey, girl, what's up? Like, meaning you see a cute girl, your guy, and you've been eyeing her for a minute. And you can't get those words out. But when you do finally get the opportunity to speak to her, you get kind of like stuck. And you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. So you get kind of stuck. And you just passed up that opportunity. It's kind of like the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey. I need to say something to my mom, but every time I approach her, I get kind of like stuck. And then she just takes over the conversation and then that's just left me to just go in my room and not even say anything and just deal with being in my feelings and just sit here thinking like, yo, what am I going to do? Let me just write April. Me personally, I don't really let you get the best of me, meaning I'm not going to let you take over the conversation. You can talk over me all you fucking want. Oh, you motherfucking want. But just believe that I'm going to get my word in edgewise. Now, I'm not telling you to go and argue with your mama because that's not the respectable thing to do. However, what I would do if I were you, if I was in your shoes, I definitely would leave her a letter. Like, I've left my mom many letters as a teenager when I felt like I couldn't talk to her because she was a little bit hard to talk to. Even though she would say things like, you can talk to me about anything. Which was a lie because I know my mama real well. She would tell me that, but she did not mean that in general. What she meant was, uh, bitch, you can talk to me about good stuff. I don't want to hear nothing bad, nothing negative. Don't try to come to me with no bullshit, okay? So basically, that's what she meant in my eyes. So a lot of times, I wouldn't say anything. Or when I would say something, it was in a letter through to her. you know. And that's just the type of person she was. Me... I'm not like that with my kids. They're able to talk to me. However, I have had letters. Don't get me wrong now. I have had quite a few letters from, let me see, my oldest son, Tati, and even Mumsy. They have sent me letters. They didn't send them to me. They've either slipped them under my door, left them on my dresser, or downstairs somewhere where I can see it. Because they felt like, you know what? You do get angry, and you do over talk. And I'll be the first to admit, I do that shit too. Like, if I don't like something that you're saying to me, and you're my child... I'm going to just squash it and nip it in the bud and I'm going to continue talking. And that's just what I do. However, your situation is totally different. It's like when you get ready to leave, your mom gets an attitude. To me, that is loneliness. She doesn't like to be alone. And you need to explain that to her in a letter and let her know like, hey, I want to be there with you every second that I can. But mom, I do have a life to live and I want to enjoy that as well, just as well as you enjoy your life. I'm not leaving you for good. I'm just going out to have a good time. And I understand how you feel and that I'm your only child and you're trying to protect me. But trust me, I'm going to make the right decisions and I'm going to do right. You have nothing to worry about. Sometimes just reading a letter just puts you in a different state of mind where you'll be able to comprehend what the person is saying. And you'll be able just to understand and you'll also be able to be calm, be at peace and be able to reread what they're saying to you. And like I said, comprehend it and then approach the situation differently. You know, no parent is easy to deal with. There's no book on how to be a great parent. Ain't nobody's parenting skills great. Nobody got the best parenting skills ever. Because I'm pretty sure every last one of us who had kids or a kid has lost some type of patience. Because they will do all kind of shit. You can have the best kid in the motherfucking world, okay? Like the best motherfucker who gets all straight A's and everything like that. But they gonna do one fucking thing to slip up and your ass gonna be on them like a grain of rice. Okay, white on rice or white on bread or whatever the fuck you want to call that shit. You're going to be on them. So, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying your mom is right for what she's doing because it's not right. It kind of like alienates you. And then it makes you start feeling like you don't really want to say nothing to her. You don't really want to tell her. And you know what I'm saying? I get that. But if you go to school and you work and you're helping your mom at home, I think that you do deserve a break. But if that doesn't work out, sweetheart, which I'm pretty sure that it will because that's your mother and you're her only child and she don't want to lose you for nothing in this world. But if it doesn't work, then maybe it's time for you to get a little bit of flames under your feet and move out. Now, I'm pretty sure if you told your mama you was moving out, she would probably have a fit about that and it would probably break her heart. But we got to come to like, we got to meet in the middle. We got to meet in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be a hermit and stay in the house and not do anything. And she can't keep you as a prisoner. And and 
and not allow you to do things. You're a grown up. You are conducting yourself as a mature young lady and you're respecting yourself and your mother. So she has to let some ties go. If you keep your kid boxed in and secluded so much, they are going to rebel against you. You know what I'm saying? Like we have to let them do some things. We don't have to let them do every fucking thing, but we have to allow them to do some things in life. And with that being said, we have to allow them to grow up. And I think like with your mom, she's not allowing you to grow up that much because you are an only child. Like, listen, I was an only child for 12 years. Okay. With my mama, 12 years with my mom, my dad, I know you're like, why am I smelling my hair? Cause I sprayed this dove stuff in it and it smells really good. But like I was saying, I was an only child for 12 years, okay? And my mom was so fucking strict, like you would not believe it. When I would go outside to play, I had to play in front of the kitchen window. While everybody else's kids was over there playing hopscotch, double dutch, monkey in the middle, and all that kind of shit, I had to stay right there in front of the kitchen window where you could see me. Well, shit, I might as well just stay in the fucking house. Why even bother going outside? Because those kids ain't going to stay over there in front of the window with me. And had they stayed over there in front of the window with me and said one foul thing, my mother was coming out there and embarrassing me or telling me to bring my ass in the house. So my mama was so strict like really really strict um on me like it was just like so unbearable sometimes i would just whisper under my breath i hate her can't stand her like you know that's what we do as kids but i get it i understand however i'm not as strict as my mom but i'm a little bit more harder on my kids you know i do give them some leniency like go ahead go to the movies go have some fun but you ain't about to run all over me now, like I said, I was a straight, I'm a single, a single kid. I was an only child until I was 12. And then my sister came along when my sister got old enough. She gave my sister more freedom than me. And for the longest, I could not understand this. Like, wow. So you take all that shit out of me. You treat me like a prisoner, but this bitch can do whatever the fuck she want to do and go here and there. Like, seriously? Yes. Could not call my house past 7 o'clock. And once I was 17 and was able, 16, and was able to have a boyfriend, girl, I had to be the house by 9 o'clock, which is respectable because I'm only 16. But, like, she was on me like a hawk. And, I, I mean, I guess I could understand that, you know what I'm saying, because I am a girl and boys are fresh and, th and you know. So she was protecting me more or less from the world however being that she was so strict i did kind of like rebel and do things behind her back which doesn't make it right but at least i can say this i learned a lot from my mom and even though she might have been strict and overprotective and things of that nature it put me in a good state of mind and it allowed me to mature and then see the wrong things that i should have done and things that i could change in my life now granted i got five kids and i love them all to death and they do some fucked up shit okay don't get me wrong they're no way perfect but they're kids and they're gonna do what they want to do regardless no matter how much i scream at them they're gonna do it if they want to do it but it doesn't make it right for me to hold them prisoner from enjoying their youth so you know like I said, I think like sometimes we just got to sit down, especially when we're not in our feelings and we have to write a person a letter or a couple of pages, you know, I think like sometimes just writing a letter is more personable, but it also opens up a better environment for a real conversation. You think your mom was just going to leave the letter and not just, you know what I'm saying, respond on it. She's definitely going to respond on the letter. You know what I'm saying? She's definitely going to reply to what you said. It may not be in a time frame that you expect her to, like meaning that day or the next day, but she's definitely going to respond to it. She may not respond to it as in, hey, hey girl, um, you know, I got this letter from you. She may just respond to it as in, okay, well, mom, I'm going out now. And she might just be a little bit more low key. When you give her something to read, it also gives her something to think about, meaning she's going to go back and reference that paper and she's reading it, not hearing it. Because when you guys are arguing and you're arguing your point and she's arguing her point, she's not hearing none of that shit. She's only hearing what the fuck she want to hear. And that's what she's saying. She's not hearing no other shit than that. But when you write to her, it enables her to sit there and concentrate on what you are saying. She's not going to crumble up the paper halfway in and just come start arguing with you. She's going to continue to read it because she wants to know what the fuck you got to say. So... In this type of person, in this type of person's um, personality, like your mom, I think, like, for me, I would just handle it with a well 
written letter. But like I said, I wouldn't advise you to not write it while you're in your feelings. Because when you're in your feelings, that means you in your feelings. That means that you can say all types of things that should not have been said and that you really didn't mean. And we don't want nobody's feelings to get hurt in the midst of all of this. We want to come to a conclusion. Me in the middle. So that way, mom, when you know I'm going out, I'm coming back. And I'll see you in a little while. And everything that you done taught me from the age of one to 20 I have it instilled in my brain and I'm going to be a respectable young lady she's going to understand this and this is what you need to let her know and inform her of in a letter so that way she can reference back to it it's a way of communication it's better than nothing and like I said some people you got to approach them like that you know what I'm saying you can't just go up to a gunman a crazy motherfucker you know what I'm saying they got hostages and say yo give me the hostages or start shooting at him, or try to fight with him, that's not going to make the situation any better. This nigga going to start a war with you. Oh, so I'm a hostage, and you think you about to come up and roll up on me? Nigga, please, I'll blast you and these motherfucking hostages. So what do they do? They got a person for hostages who talks to them, who tries to coach them through shit, who calls them on the phone and talks to them and enables them to be able to think in their right state of mind. It's the same fucking shit. Write a letter, sit down, and be able to talk to the person. My daughter Mumsy does it to me all the time. Not all the time, but <clears throat> I'll never forget. She wanted me to buy her this sweatshirt for Christmas. Jake Paul. When I looked at the sweatshirt, it was $70, $74. And I was like, no. Which she told me, and I was like, no, I'm not buying that. This is what she told me to my, you know, she asked me, and I told her, no, I'm not buying no $74 shirt for you. You're only 10 and I left it at that. Well, maybe like a few days later, you know, I dropped her off to school. And as soon as I dropped her off, I get a text message from her. It was a long text message. But I know she didn't write it within 10 seconds that quick. She wrote it up and then saved it and then gave it to me at a later date. And basically, it was about the Jake Paul sweatshirt, how she really wanted it. And she explained her reasons. And all I could do is just reread this email, excuse me, this text message at least three times. And as soon as I finished reading it, what did I do? I went on the Jake Paul website and I bought that sweatshirt for $74 for her. That's exactly what I did. Because I understood where you were coming from. You know, sometimes we don't listen to them and we don't give them the opportunity to talk, which is not cool because we would want the same to be done for us. But the letter was the best thing that she could have done and I was able to understand her. And I was able to communicate and I met her in the middle and I got the sweatshirt for her. Sometimes we just want to hear what we want the fucking hear. That's not the first time. There was another time when I had this one to punish her and told her she couldn't go to the party, her friend's party. And what did she do? She wrote me an email. And... I let her go. It's not that I'm like a pushover, but I understood her because at the time, I don't want to hear anything you got to say. I don't want to hear it. It's what I say. What I say goes. And we can't always be like that. You know what I'm saying? These are human beings. They might be our kids, but they do have a right to have an opportunity to speak. So my thoughts to this is definitely sit down. Write your mom a letter and let her know what you've been thinking and what's on your mind and how she needs to let go a little bit. Okay? So, you guys, now we're going to move on to the next one. Definitely give Ty your thoughts on how she should deal with her mom. What do you think about the letter? Would you guys do something like that? Would you, you know what I'm saying? What would, what would, you, what would you do if it was a person that, you know what I'm saying, you couldn't deal with, and you just feel like, okay, well, hmm, I'm just going to not say anything, or I'm just going to run up on them. How would you deal with the situation? So, moving on, this one is pretty long. Hi, April. You can call me Michelle. I have a crazy story for you, but it is my story to tell. I am a 32-year-old hard-working woman and mother. I married my best friend's brother, who I have known since I was 13 years old. Almost a year ago, we got married. We have been together for about five years. We share a three-year-old together, and I have two other children. And our three, um, and he has one child from previous relationship, from previous relationship. Okay, let's get to the root of the problem. Okay, I left my home, which required, uh, which required, my, and which I required 
I left my home in which I inquired with my own on, on my own on my okay I left my own which I left my home which I inquired on my own when me and my then boyfriend found a new home together that we were that I'm not really sure what she's saying that are that we are purchasing and when we moved in there it was just me and him meaning her husband they were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time so she and her boyfriend got a home together they purchased together and at the time they were just boyfriend and girlfriend <clears throat> and it was just her and him living there and her three children one which was his well shortly after moving in we found out that my best friend his sister was leaving their seven-year-old daughter home alone at night while she went to work at the or went to the club so she left her best friend which is her husband's sister left her seven-year-old home alone while she either went to work or would go to the club which the daughter told us about so we moved her daughter into our home so that my sister-in-law would be able to get it together and that her daughter would have a stable environment and she lived with us for two and a half years not too shortly after that my husband's son's mother lost custody of her six children one which is my husband's son who had to come and stay with us okay so i know things happen and all that but i do everything i work 40 plus hours a week i wash clothes cook and clean help the kids with schoolwork and not to mention run to school every time his son gets into trouble yes his son is a problem child came to us with anger issues which he would break things if he gets mad and he is a compulsive liar and a master manipulator he also has repeated the same grade and since has been with us i have been basically doing his schoolwork to get him to even pass his grade we have had him tested to see if he has a learning disability and they have told us he's just plain lazy simple like that girl i know this is a lot but that is the only one problem well my best friend my husband's sister this summer of 2017 finally started working a first shift at her job and we decided it was time for her daughter to go back and live with her so we did that we allowed her to go back home and we still was dealing with his son which was becoming a lot for me to deal with because my husband is like a gentle giant as does and does nothing as far as discipline with the kids okay so here it is September of 2017 someone on my husband's job informed him that his sister has not been to work for three days straight and hasn't called in either basically no call no show and the last day they saw her was at work she was behaving strangely my husband calls me at home mind you i work third shift and he tells me this and that he is going to leave work early to go and check on his sister so being that that is my husband and that his sister is also my best friend and my sister-in-law I said I would ride over and check on her I called my own mother up to meet me at her house because I didn't know what to expect when I got there so I get there and basically my sister-in-law my best friend my husband's sister she has some psychiatric breakdown where she's just basically checked out of reality her daughter was there with her at this time and she was 10 years old and has not been in school for those three days as well her daughter has been basically there watching over her mother not going to school hmm so we took her to my house the little girl and her mother my best friend and they was just the girl was just losing her mind she had to be prompted to do everything she couldn't comprehend simple commands she wasn't sleeping bathing nothing so we had to move her and her mother and her daughter in with us we put her in the hospital for a psych evaluation and the whole nine she was diagnosed with severe anxiety and depression and psych psychosis oh yeah not to mention she was hearing shit and seeing people with distorted faces so fast forward to the present time the girl with the help to the present time with the help of medication and therapy my best friend has come back around 
she started she started back smoking weed and doing absolutely nothing to help around the house our house she don't cook clean wash clothes pay bills or buy groceries not to mention she has to stop taking she has stopped taking her medication and seeing her psychiatrist talking about getting a, a mommy makeover and splurging money and spending it like it's going out of style me and her have had several falling outs because she is just trifling to the 10th power and at this point I just think she is taking advantage of the situation and needs to be gone. She told me it's her brother's house and she is not leaving, but I can. I can go. Girl, it's more than that, but I'm just going to stop it there. I want someone on the outside looking in to give me their thoughts on the situation. By the way, my husband hasn't said a thing to this about his sister or a thing to his sister. I'm stressed, have developed anxiety from stress dealing with his sister, his son, and her daughter. Meanwhile, my kids on the other side looking at, looking at this whole dysfunctional family. Huh. So basically, Michelle is married to her best friend's brother, and they've been together for five years. Michelle um, has three kids, one in which is her husband's, her best friend's brother's, and she just got all this foolishness going on. So she done helped out her best friend by bringing her and her daughter into the home because her best friend done went cuckoo, okay? God knows what done happened to the girl. She probably done took like some kind of strange drug. Somebody done probably slipped or something. Like, because out of nowhere, you just start breaking down and, and like going crazy and doing shit like that something is definitely wrong there but something is definitely probably wrong with her because who the hell leaves their fucking seven-year-old in the house by themselves to go to work or to go to the club like where do we do that at? like why would you leave your kid in the house by yourself by themselves you don't know what they fucking capable of doing they seven they do anything okay probably open the door for anybody that was cool that, you know, Michelle, you took her daughter in for two years and allowed her to live with you and shit like that and took care of her daughter and also probably took care of your best friend on the side to make sure she was okay. But the fact that you got them moved. Hey. Hey, boo. I miss you. I miss you, too. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Is your bedroom? It's my my backdrop, but I'm doing a video right now. Can I, can I see you in a little bit? That's that. Yeah, you got to go, honey. I got to do this real talk, okay? I'll be out in a little bit, okay? Yeah. Just close the door. Okay. Oh, yeah, your phone is right there. Just close the door. Thank you. So my grandson came in. He said he missed me and stuff. Isn't that cute? So anyway, like I was saying, so she done moved, Michelle done moved her sister-in-law's daughter in, took care of her. So her sister-in-law had two years, two and a half years to just get herself together. She got a job at the first shift finally, and then got her daughter back in her life. But then she started fucking up again. God knows doing what, because there's some reason why she had a breakdown and started acting weird like that. You know what I'm saying? Sucks, but here's the thing. Now you got this lady living in your house. She done got it back together. She done got medication. She been um, diagnosed. She been seeing a psychiatrist. But then the bitch starts smoking weed and start doing nothing. Not helping out around the house. Not cooking. Not cleaning. Not washing. Nothing. Not paying no bills. Not buying no groceries. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't give a fuck whose motherfucking sister this was. This bitch is not about to stay in my house. Your husband might be a gentle giant, sweetheart, but you cannot carry along with this. This is gonna break up your home. And why? When is that little boy going to go back home, okay? Like, you got yourself a bad kid, and then the, your sister-in-law, like, girl, let me tell you something. If it was me, I'd just fucking pack up and leave. Like, seriously. And I know that might not be the answer to shit, but if it were I, and my husband's not doing anything about it, and um, she's sitting up there disrespecting my home, and I got to clean up after my sister-in-law, my niece-in-law, and my little son, my little um, stepson, girl... I would, I would fucking leave. There's no way that I'm going to be the only sane one up in that motherfucker working and cleaning up after motherfuckers and dealing with badass kids who's probably talking shit to me along with his sister talking shit to me. No, no, no girl. A bitch like me would be like, okay, you know what, gentle giant husband, I see that you're not really doing anything about this. And as much as I love you, I can't deal with this anymore. I am stressed out about it. I am going through stuff. I got my own child to raise and my other child and my other child. So she got three kids of her own and she got her daughter 
um, excuse me, and she got her sister-in-law and her stepson there. So, yeah, basically, if it were me, I would motherfucking leave. So that's your brother's house. You need to maybe mention to your sister that it's not only your brother's house, but it's my home as well. And you're not going to be up in here disrespecting. If there's something that you don't like, my dear, the door is right there. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. I would either leave myself or I'll put that bitch out, okay? And I would let my husband know, like, listen, we need to have a talk about your sister. This is what she don't do. She don't do. She don't do. She don't do. And she says, like, this is not a good environment for our three kids, okay, for one. And as many times as I've tried to discipline your son and talk to him, it's not helping, babe, that you're not giving your input. It's not helping that you're being, like, a soft-hearted parent and here it is i'm the hard parent which is not even his parent and he's probably feels like he don't have to listen to you because you're not his mother you know what i'm saying but the kid is lazy the kid is lazy let him fail see this is where you're going wrong don't do his work for him don't do his work for him if that little nigga want to fail and get left back let his ass fucking fail and get left the fuck back it is not your fucking duty to do his work for him because as long as you do his work for him that nigga ain't gonna learn shit and he's gonna continuously feel like okay michelle gonna do my work for me i ain't gotta do it i just put up a fit and she'll do it for me girl bye i'm not about to do nobody's homework i'll be more than happy to help you with that shit but i'm not about to sit here and do your work along with the shit that I need to get done? Not going to happen. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not next week. I'm not doing nobody's shit. So what I would do is I would let that little motherfucker fail. Like seriously though, we don't really want our kids to fail in life, but we cannot do their work for them. And if he wants to be lazy and he expects you to do it, then the only thing that you can do to teach him a lesson is make him do his own shit. I guarantee you that little nigga is not going to want to get left back again. Okay? Because if you do punk ass, somebody's going to make fun of you. They're going to laugh at you. You're going to be the laughing stock of the school system and everybody's gonna come to school and say aha that's why you got left back this is what's gonna happen for sure so if it were I I would stop doing the shit that I do meaning I'm not gonna help you do your work because I end up doing it and I'm not gonna sit back and listen to my sister-in-law who don't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of or two fucking solid feet to stand up on and talk shit to me you're not about to be up in my fucking domain my fucking place where I live my peace of mind and talk shit to me you can pack your shit up and your daughter shit up and skedaddle or you can pack your shit up and leave either way you're not going to be in my household talking shit to me and what you should do is let us let her brother know like this is unacceptable who the hell is going to allow somebody to stay with them and not clean up after themselves like there's no way on god's green earth am i going to allow you to stay in my motherfucking house and you're not cleaning up after yourself i'm not the merry maid motherfucking service or the goddamn tutoring service okay this is not the do it whatever you need to do or i'll do whatever you need to do squad no bitch you can pick up after yourself and if you don't buy no groceries then i guess you won't be eating tonight okay yeah we'll feed your daughter because that's only right she's a child she can't help the predicament that she's in right now that she got a mother like you however you're not going to motherfucking eat bitch okay until you pick up and earn your keep that's what the fuck it is and see she feel like she got one on you because that's her brother let me tell you something if he cannot control his sister and he cannot say something to you about that about his home and his family then there's the problem okay now either he's gonna get ran all over or i'm gonna run the fuck out of that house and i'm not gonna turn around you know what I'm saying? Like, but honestly, I feel like you need to give her her walking papers and let your husband know, listen, it's time for your sister to go. She's been here long enough and it has caught a lot, caused a lot of friction in the household. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to deal with that very well. So I'm going to need for you, babe, to tell her that it's time for her to leave, like straight up. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we have to put our foot down. That might not be your home on your own, but you guys did purchase it together. And I say this, like, I'm not about to be sitting up in my home where I fucking live and I pay bills at to be uncomfortable by nobody. Like, seriously, like, I will have your ass put the fuck out in a heartbeat and not even think twice about it. Like, you're not about to stay up in my shit and fucking irritate me and fucking do what the fuck you want. That's not about to happen. I'm quick to put a nigga out or a motherfucker out and I'm quick to call the motherfucking police on you if you want to act up and start acting like you want to break some shit and throw some shit up around here because we're not about to have that fucking dysfunctional foolish shit and you damn sure ain't going to be carrying on in my motherfucking house like that around my three kids. Like that shit ain't about to go down. That's why me personally, I would push that bitch out. What I would get for her, hunties. 
go right to the court that's in your area and get her an eviction letter okay the sheriff will come and put her out you have to get her a letter because if they have been living in your household for more than a certain amount of times then they have every right to be there however the only way that you're going to get that bitch out is if you get her evicted from your home you can put her out if you want to but i guarantee you that bitch gonna come back and she's gonna weasel her way back in and she's gonna get that little heart string and those tears of <gasps> boohoo to her brother who's going to let her back the fuck in and it's so fucked up because he probably don't have to deal with the shit you know what i'm saying because he's at work during the daytime and by the time he gets home it's probably evening and everything is probably done settled down a bit and he don't have to deal with it but here it is you're there all day and you try to get some rest because you work the third shift and you have to put up with the foolishness the dirt the squabble the cursing the breaking hell to the fucking no hell to the 10th power no I'm not about to put up with anybody's shit. Not today, not tomorrow, or not on no given motherfucking day. If you got some shit with you and you ain't got a place to stay, bitch, you better find a place to stay because you're not about to stay with me. Not not disrespectful, not being disrespectful to me. Like that's that's one thing that I'm not tolerating and I don't tolerate in my home. And sometimes you burn a lot of bridges like that when you allow people to come stay with you because they don't have anywhere else to go. That's how we get fucked up. That's how shit gets fucked up in the game. So like I told you before, we you can't sometimes Sometimes you can't even allow family to come through and stay because you know what I'm saying it just makes a bad situation unfortunately and it seems like when you have family staying with you those are the worst ones because they want to take advantage they want to walk all over you and they feel like they're entitled to some shit because that's your motherfucking family but no bitch you're not entitled to just as much as I'm not entitled to shit I worked and earned my money to have this place and now you hear you want to come and be destructive on it hell to the no 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 I am not about to sit around and allow no fucking raggedy ass bitch fuck my shit up. So now she's smoking, she got dirty dishes, dirty clothes, and all of that good stuff all around the house. So if who's washing her clothes? Because if she's not washing her clothes, then who the fuck is doing it? But I'll tell you what though, if you're providing transportation, she wouldn't be getting the ride. If you're providing meals on the table, she wouldn't motherfucking eat. Like, seriously, I would make enough for just me, my husband, and three kids, and hers, and that'd be that. Because you don't want to just, like, it's not the child's fault that she's ignorant, but it's the mother's fault that she acts the way she does because that's just her personality. That's how she is. She's a slob. She's, she's a drug addict, and I honestly believe that she probably smoked something, and she didn't know what slipped in her freaking weed and just blew her mind, okay? Because that's what it sounds like to me. You're a little bit cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Like, what is it? But, you know, I mean, it is what it is, Like, but it's not really it is what it is. The only thing that I could suggest is to put your foot down to that bitch. Because what's she going to do, tell her brother? Yes, I did tell her this and that because this is what's been going on, and you haven't been doing anything about it, and I'm tired of it. Cause that's what I would do. Like you're not, no, you're not about to sit up here and disrespect me for some bullshit. Okay, that's not what we about to do. We're not about to come up in nobody else's motherfucking domain and feel like you running shit around here and that you ain't got to do shit. That's not how it goes because it's too. This is the household, and even he don't run shit by himself. Meaning your husband don't run shit by yourself, and neither do you, Michelle. So don't let this bitch come up in your home and feeling like she can run shit and she can do whatever the fuck she want to do to please herself, and then continue on with that babbling bullshit about oh well this is my brother's house. Yeah, it might be your brother's house bitch but i had a portion of this motherfucking house so it's your brother's and my house and if you don't like it well the road is right there you can take your stuff and your daughter's stuff and be gone with it that's how i would handle shit but some people are different i'm not saying approach to beat the bitch like with like with like a can of worms but let the bitch know like listen this is my home and sometimes you know what i notice when we don't say nothing and we just allow them they just feel like oh okay this bitch is scared i'm gonna just do whatever the fuck i want i'm gonna say whatever the fuck i want because she's not gonna say nothing bad no bitch you got one motherfucking time to disrespect me and i'm not gonna say nothing but the second time come around and you feel like you want to say whatever the fuck it is you want to say trust and believe i'm gonna give you a tongue lashing of a lifetime which means that i'm gonna go in on you so hard and deep the bitch you ain't never gonna want to say nothing smart to me again or you might not even want to come around me either way i'm fine with that okay i'm fine with either way but i would not let nobody sit up in my place and talk shit to me like and be a slob it's either you gonna go sweetheart or that bitch gonna go but either one somebody's got to go and i would really hope that it wouldn't be you and more or less her the time has come give her 30 days to find her place to stay and that's it get up get her evicted if your husband doesn't understand it unfortunately he doesn't understand but maybe in the long run in the future somewhere he will know where you're coming from because god damn have some privacy moments you got three kids and you got this bitch living there like 
I'm saying that's what the fuck I was doing. Let my husband know like what the fuck is going on and how it's making you feel. Oh, my husband texted me and said happy birthday from this side. I love you. Oh, because you know it's twelve o'clock in New York, so it's my birthday. Oh. Hello. Hi, babe. Thank you. I don't even remember what I was talking about because my husband called me on the phone, but basically, um, <laughs> um, to tell me happy birthday, but basically what I was saying is, you know, there's no way that I'm going to allow anybody to live in my household and walk all over me and just treat me in such a manner that's just unhuman-like as well as just annoy the fuck out of me. So, you know, you're either going to have to put your foot down or you're going to have to get them moving out the house. That's, that's the only thing I can say. She's going to have to leave or you're going to have to leave. But I damn sure wouldn't leave my home. I would definitely make sure it's her turn to go. And you're going to have to put the boy in his place. Like, you're not going to continue to do his work for him. He's going to have to learn either way. You know what I'm saying? He's a kid. He's going to have to learn the hard way. We can't just keep doing shit for our kids and they don't learn. So, with that being said, you're going to have to put two feet down and some hands and let it be known that you're the woman of this house and it is what you say just as well and if no one doesn't like it well the door is right there and you can leave okay point blank period so yes you guys you can leave this and you can leave your comments below you know I took long than um, my husband was telling me on the phone like okay so I just wanted to bring this guy to you guys attention um so and I'm not really gonna give her no airplay because she's really not worth it but I put up a video um, of you know just a family vlog and it was you know keeping up with the fam Tinky gives me a black eye because in the video we was doing an unboxing and at the very end Tinky whacked the crap out of me like whacked the shit out of me in my eye like it was tearing up of course I didn't get a black black eye you know what I'm saying I didn't start off with a black eye and it just stung really well and so it was just like you know more or less a title okay everybody knew in the video that I didn't get black eye however there was this one person called hey there okay who basically said um, that I know that this is not a black eye from a child that I'm an abusive relationship and that I'm lying to myself and to everyone else and that I'm getting beat on and all, all this crazy shit and what woman my age has a man that lives in another state and like she knows all of this because she is a tarot card reader and a psychic medium. So you gonna come on my motherfucking channel, talk about you a tarot card reader and a psychic medium, and you gonna talk all this shit. And then you know, I, I, you know, she, she just basically went in to say that I'm lying to you guys because I didn't get that black eye from Tinky. There was no fucking black eye, first of all, okay, you dumb bitch. But second of all, like she just kept on and on and on talking about how I need to go get help, I need to love myself, and I need to stop allowing him to put his hands on me, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, bro what the fuck is wrong with you and like I, that's exactly what I said to her what the fuck is wrong with you like because who comes on somebody else's video and writes some dumb shit like that like I don't understand what's going on people I said you know some you ain't nothing but a weirdo you're a tarot card reader first of all I don't believe anything that these motherfuckers say and then psychic I'm not you know basically I went back and forth with her along with other people you know so if you were psychic and a tarot card reader then bitch you could see me giving you the finger all across the globe then she just came back she came back again and this went into how she knows about people being in abusive relationships. She's seen women in abusive relationships. It's called the battered woman, um, the battered woman syndrome, and how we're going to seek help, or he's going to end up killing us, or really, really hurting us, and we have to love ourselves better. And she knows that I didn't get that black eye from my grandson, and et cetera, et cetera. Like, are you serious right now? Like, what fucking black eye? So it's like I went back in on her, and my husband had something to say. Then she just, my husband just basically told me that. She replied again, talking about how I'm on Section 8 and welfare and, you know, like, bitch, where are you? What, what? And she knows this and because she, and she's because she's a psychic medium and a tarot card reader. And that's a gift and et cetera, et cetera. And am I reporting all this extra income to my caseworker in Arizona? Like, first of all, I wish I did get Section 8 because then I wouldn't have to work so hard to pay my own motherfucking rent, okay? Second of all, if somebody wants to give me some food stamps, then please give me some motherfucking food stamps because a bitch would like some food stamps. Who the fuck wouldn't like some food stamps? But I don't get any. But if somebody want to be so nice as to be like, Muffins, you want some food stamps for the month? Here you go. Here's some food stamps for you. I got you some food stamps right here. These are for you. Thank you.
I'd be like, oh, for real? A bitch be on the back of the motherfucking shopping cart with her legs in the air like Mary Poppins, okay? Talk about, woohoo, you get a box of cereal, you get a box of cereal, you get some Twinkies, you get some Twinkies, and you get a steak, you get a steak, you get a lobster tail, you get some shrimp. Hello, bitch, I would be definitely on the back of that motherfucking shopping cart singing aloud like I was on cloud nine like Mary Poppins talking about, I'm in heaven. Swipe this motherfucker. Let it make it rain, okay? It's rain food stamp today. I'm just saying, okay? In Section 8, girl, listen. If they want to pay my rent, which I'm pretty sure they don't, <laughs> hello? Then, uh, hello. You, whoever, you, who want to pay my rent this month? Okay, we ain't even got to call it Section 8. We can call it April's 8 or April's fun. Whatever the fuck you want to call it, we going to call it shit. Welfare. Let me tell you something. If I was getting welfare, then that would mean I would get Medicaid, which means that I wouldn't have to pay for my own motherfucking teeth, okay? <sighs> hello. I would have some dentures. Like, you know, the kind that you pull out. That's what welfare give you. But a bitch is buying her own teeth, okay? Hello. And, um, so you're a psychic medium. Bitch, maybe you read it from the past when I used to be on welfare. Like, how long ago was that? Everybody knows that because I shared that story with them back in 2010 on A Real Talk on my first channel. So, bitch, you're, you're old. You're, you're, you're old psychic medium fucking tarot card reader. Not to mention... Look, my husband is like, I thought you wouldn't respond to that, babe. Okay, so, fuck her. Like, fuck her. I'm t Fuck her. Fuck her. I had to. He did tell me not to respond to her. I said I wasn't going to respond to her. But after reading what she wrote about me being on welfare and stuff, like, this is basically what I said to her. Just, I said, how dare you speculate because I have multiple children that I have to have welfare in section eight take care of my family because I have multiple children I need section eight and welfare to take care of my family like it's sad because she's not the first person that's tried that with me you know what I'm saying and like videos prior not videos prior but years prior channels prior someone said the same thing that I was on welfare because I had five children okay and she wrote this to my friend, Love Kisses. She said, well, isn't she on welfare because she has five children? No, I had a job, a good-ass job. What are you talking about? I worked for the state, okay? I did Medicaid and shit. I didn't qualify for welfare or anything. However, it's sad that when you have a multiple of children and you're black, that people automatically feel like you're on Section 8 or you're getting welfare. Like, sweetheart, I bust my ass every motherfucking day, and I don't go to sleep sometimes to 3 and 4 in the morning because I'm busting my ass doing something because I'm trying to get my grind on and make my money moves, okay? That's how the fuck I survive. Though I don't have to explain that to any motherfucking body, okay? However, it's bitches or dumb derelicts that be on the internet that swear that because you're black and you have multiple children you need some type of government motherfucking assistance to help you get by okay like i said i wish some motherfucking body would give me motherfucking food stamps okay but since they don't i bust my ass and then she had the nerve to say something about oh because i and then i wear hair hats you know what? That's so unoriginal that I wear hair hats. And I hate when people like her or anybody else states, oh, you wear hair hats. So motherfucking what? Okay? That somebody wears a wig or a weed. Who gives a fuck? Your grandmother probably wear a wig or a hair hat. Who gives a shit? That's so unoriginal. Bitch, where you at? This is 2018. Everybody is wearing a motherfucking wig. Okay? Or a wig or some type of hair extensions because that's what the fuck we want to do. But at the end of the day, I guarantee you, if I was to take this motherfucking wig off, you see that I have hair. And I do got motherfucking hair, okay? We've seen that on enough videos to let it be known that I wear this because the fuck I feel like it. But I don't have to explain that to anybody who's uneducated and just fucking stupid and ignorant as she is. And then you're going to continuously tell me it's a gift? No, bitch, you're a lunatic. You're a loony. I don't believe in any of that psychic shit. If anybody else does, that's your business. That's 
that's good for you. What's good for you ain't always good for the gander, but you're not about to come up on my videos and continuously try to disrespect me by one saying that I'm an abusive relationship and what woman has a man that lives in another state? What woman don't? It's common, okay? And then on top of that, say it's a red flag and then I'm getting abused and I had a black eye and it wasn't for my grandson. When in fact, I didn't have a black eye. Like, who the fuck? What's, this is the thing that I'm trying to understand with people. If you don't like somebody that's on YouTube or anywhere in general, why would you continuously watch them or write something or bother them? Like, what gets you off on shit like that? Like, and what makes it so sad is that you continuously, people continuously do this is because for one, they don't have a life. For two, you hating and jealous. Huh? Three, you lonely and, and miserable. Okay. And four, you a punk. Because if you were in my face or in another person's face, you would not even say any of half the shit that you say. Like, I hate internet thugs and I hate people that go on the internet and try to bully other people and try to downgrade them and just try to put them down and talk shit to them because they don't have nothing else to do or they're miserable in their life. That is one pathetic person. And it's so sad that you can be so pathetic as to try to, like, put somebody else down, Okay. Because you don't have anything else to do. If I didn't get my teeth fixed, she probably would have said something about my crooked ass teeth. But now that I have them fixed on the top, who knows what's next that she's going to say. Either way, it doesn't even matter to me. But I find it like hilarious that these people can really sit behind screens and like talk shit about other people and just want to bully them and just be mean and just to try to ruin their day. Like, bitch, let me tell you something. I don't really give a fuck about what you say or what you think about me. Because at the end of the day, I already know who I am. I already know what the fuck I got to do. And I already know what's going on in my life and what my motherfucking bank account looks like. Okay? I could care less about what yours look like, what the fuck you're doing, or what else you're not doing. That is not my concern. But I will not let you defame my name. I'm not going to let you sit up here and defame my name or my husband's name or my kid's name. Like you're not about to sit up here and tell me that I'm an abusive relationship and she's trying to convince not only me, th that's the funny part. She really tried to convince me that I was in an abusive relationship and also convince my viewers that sh that I'm in an abusive relationship and also convince herself, which she's probably already done, that I'm in an abusive relationship. Like Okay, sweetheart, if you want to live vicariously through me, go right ahead. That's If, if you want to be the muffins, then go right ahead. Have a bite out of that shit, okay? Go right ahead. If you want to be the muffins, go right ahead. But do it in a different manner. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, these people are so petty and it's a shame. Like, you know, I don't have time to be arguing with nobody on no, no YouTube or none of that shit. I got shit to motherfucking do. And arguing with some petty ass, jealous ass, ignorant ass, miserable ass, pathetic ass person is not on my timeline. Like dead ass serious. Okay. So on that note, divas, stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. And yes, if you want to send me some food stamps, then go right ahead. Okay. Let me know the, the number, the pin number and shit. And you know what I'm saying? What day I can get them and how much you done left on the card. And I will return the cards back to you. No hate or shade on anybody that gets food stamps. Cause the bitch used to get food stamps many moons ago. And if I could get some now, then hello. Like I said, everybody going to get a box of cereal. Okay? Peace. Oh, and don't forget, if you want to pay the rent, then you know you can go ahead and send me the PayPal money, um, my PayPal account, and you can put the money in there. Every little bit will count. I mean, like, if you all want to get together and just put, like, a dollar in, we can call it April's 8, or we can call it, I don't know, um, YouTube, YouTube, Section 8, YouTube, YouTube 8. We can call it that, but you can also send that to me as well. So, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. What? Mm. 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 Mm.